Guy Mercer, Bath Rugby Open Side Flanker. Welcome to Bath Rugby TV. Thank you. <laughs> now, on Saturday evening, you left the field to a great standing ovation from the crowd. That must have been a nice feeling. Yeah, it was good. Um, you know, really warm reception. Uh, I usually try and pick my mum out over there, but unfortunately she wasn't in her seat. Um, but yeah, she usually leads the, uh, the attempt to get people on their feet, but they jumped up on their own accord, so that was uh, really nice. Now, you've tended to take your starting chances with both hands here at Bath Rugby. Do you feel like there's an added focus when you know you'll, you'll be wearing that number seven jersey? Uh, look, I, you know, I love, I love playing. I love running out, especially at the rec. Um, so any chance I, I, you know, I get to do it, I've got to make sure I, I stick my hand up and, and keep trying to pressurise the coaches for, for more starts. So, yeah. Now, you've been involved with the club since you were 15. That's longer than most of your teammates. Do you feel... Do you feel enriched by that sense of history in terms of you've been here a very long time and you've seen the comings and goings and a lot of changes happen here? Yeah, it's uh, you know something I'm, I'm really proud of. Um, Portugal pre-season camp was, was a little bit interesting this year because uh, a couple of boys were like asking stories about sort of the old days and that made me feel a bit weird. But um, yeah, it, it, it's something that I, I'm really proud of and there's a couple of guys here who I can sort of share a, a memory or two with, which is, uh, which is really nice. I'm from a... A family is fairly sporting. Your, your brother's a rugby player. He was here before you, wasn't he? He was. Uh, he's sort of how I got my little in to the academy. So Frank Butler at the time, who's the academy manager, had Ben and, and knew that I was playing and, and sort of starting to develop. So uh, he, he got me down and started doing you know a summer here and a half term there and ended up sort of sticking around since. So that's been all right. <laughs> uh, and then my sister is a... Um, She's a groom uh, and, and uh, head girl down uh, in Gilliam in Dorset for Sam Griffiths, who's an Aussie rider, and they're um, they're just preparing or sort of in the in the run up to preparing for the Rio Olympics. So very exciting times for her. Does that mean you've started to follow the equestrian world? Uh, I have tried to follow the equestrian world uh, one or two times, but other than sort of dancing horses and uh, get over the jumps without hitting anything, then uh, yeah, it's, it's I don't follow it too well. Now, last season, you used to be the Rugby Player Association rep for Bath Rugby, is that right? I did, yeah. Um, and I uh, stepped down in the end and let my good friend Kane, uh, Kane Newport step up. Um, we, uh, we'd had a slightly awkward um, campaign to try and get the, uh, get the armband or whatever you want to call it, get the role for the year before. Uh, but he's, he stepped up uh, really well to it and he enjoys it greatly and... and um, he heads up to those meetings and, and has a real good input up at those board meetings. Now, what does that involve to people who aren't quite aware of what the RPA does? Um, you've just got to be a, a voice for the squad, really. Um, it's a sort of trade union, so uh, it represents all the players throughout the league. Um, so you, you've just got to get a feel for, for guys' issues here and make sure that they're being taken to a high level so that they can be addressed um, with the sort of full power of, of all the league's players rather than, you know, three or four guys maybe having a similar complaint and trying to band together and, and get something done. Um, things coming with, you know, sort of a few hundred players, it, it just has a bit more clout. I see they put on a lot of courses and stuff for players as well. Have you partaken in that this season? Uh, not this season. Um, I have had my sort of, my little one-on-one -on -one with our, our new rep, Julian. Um, so that's been great. And new Julian from, from previous. Uh, Dave Atwood, good friends with him from over in Bristol. Uh, so that's been quite a nice little tie-up. Uh, but they, you know, you, you get out what you put in with the RPA. They offer a whole lot, but you, you know, the players have to engage with it. So uh, some guys take a huge amount from it. We've got Saracens this weekend, top of the table. Do you think uh, a tough game against Toulon last weekend prepares as well for that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Toulon, one of the best teams in Europe for the last few years. You know, pretty dominant in the French league as well. So uh, you know, it, it, it's pushed us. Um, and what's been really positive is that we've been in a position to win both those games. Unfortunately, we didn't win, win either, but um, we know that we're doing the right things to get us in into that position and hopefully we'll do the same sort of stuff uh, against Saracens this weekend. Is it nice to be back playing our domestic rugby? You know, we're really disappointed to be out of Europe, um, but now we just we get to refocus and focus on one thing for the rest of the year. So as a group, we've, we've sat down and said what we need to do. Uh, addressed a few different areas that have been lacking um, in the previous games and uh, we'll just all be pulling in the right direction to, to get us back to, to where we need to be. Can you tell us about kicking the ball into the stand after the match on Saturday? Yeah, uh, well, I only played 55 minutes, so I think I had too much energy in my legs. Uh, so my ball went straight over the stand uh, to someone who'd maybe already left the ground. So uh, yeah, apologies to those on the back row.